Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, host and head bookologist here at the Get Literate Podcast. I'm a book-loving, notebook-hoarding reader and writer on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. On this podcast, we explore the power of bookology and leading literate lives. We talk all things books and reading and notebooks and writing mixed in with mindful practices and creativity to create lives we love. You can expect regular weekly episodes focused on three books you need to know about on a bookish theme and how to bring those themes to life in our actual lives too. You can also expect author interviews, notebooking inspiration, and topics to help us grow through what we go through and take inspired action to make our lives better. So grab a notebook and your TBR list and let's get literate. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Get Literate Podcast. I'm Stephanie, and I am here with a quick introduction to today's guest, Michelle Hazeltine. Michelle is a lifelong notebooker. And when I say lifelong, I mean lifelong. We are talking 99 completed notebooks and counting. She has such a love for notebooking that she started a Facebook group that has brought me great notebooking joy over the last couple of years. It's called 100 Days of Notebooking. Now, it does kick off at the start of every year, inviting everyone to have 100 days of notebooking together, but it is a Facebook group that goes all year long, and it just celebrates showing up to the page. So whether you're starting at the beginning of a new year and want to log in 100 days in a row of notebooking, or you just want to get your notebooking habits started or inspire yourself to pick notebooking back up again, the 100 Days of Notebooking Facebook group with Michelle and the incredibly dedicated, supportive community is here to help. So today I am finally talking with her live to talk all things notebooking. So we talk about what notebooking is and how to get started, why the perfect notebook matters and why it doesn't, how to show up to the page even when time is crunched or you don't know what to write about, how to troubleshoot, and much, much more. This was a joyful conversation between two virtual friends who have only met once in person so far, but you wouldn't know it. We could have spent many more hours on the call talking about our love of notebooking. And actually we did (laughs) once the call stopped recording. But if you are a notebooker, if you are someone who wants to notebook, if you just want to spend the next, oh, 40 minutes or so thinking about how notebooking could help you in your life, then you don't want to miss this conversation with Michelle. So get ready, get your notebook, get your ideas going, and here is today's episode. Michelle, welcome to the Get Literate podcast. I'm so excited to talk notebooking with you today. Stephanie, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to get started. It's been a long time coming, as I said before we hit record. It's been a couple of years. I'm not sure exactly how long, but a couple of years since we first connected around a shared love of teaching and writing and especially notebook. We also, and I remember this distinctly, we also connected around our preferred notebook choice because you and I were some of the only notebookers who preferred blank pages. And it was an instant kinship over the internet. (laughs) Such a um, uh, controversial it was what kind of pages. And when you, when I say blank, it's so often that I met with, oh, I could never do that. So when you and I figured that out, I know I was like, oh, this is, this is someone, yes, I, who appreciates it. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are supposed to know each other. Although I have a little, a little spoiler, I will, and I'll explain later, but I have, I have switched to the other side for some of my notebooks, but but we can talk about notebook and notebook types uh, later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why don't let's begin with you just giving listeners a little bit of background about you and yourself. They know you're here to talk about notebooking, 
um, and your special Facebook group that I that I love. But give them the backstory first before we get there. Okay, well, who am I? Um, um, 28th year of education, my first year as an instructional coach, which has just been really exciting. Um, I have been a notebooker since I was in the fourth grade. And oh, that's one I didn't pull. Um, I still have that notebook and all of the others since. Um, my mother gave it to me and just started me unintentionally on this journey. And I have always considered myself a writer. Um, I say that notebook notebooking is the way I make sense of the world around me. And it's something that I used as a tool when I was an elementary school teacher, when I was a middle school teacher, I still use it as an instructional coach, um, as well as in my personal life. And like you said, um, four years ago in 2020, I started um, a Facebook group called 100 Days of Notebooking, which has, which has been really exciting. Yeah. And that, that group has given me such notebooking inspiration in so many ways. You know, even if you are not a notebooker every day, right? It's not the kind of group that is, did you notebook today? Oh, you didn't? Well, then see you tomorrow. No, no, no. It, it's it's such a welcoming space for people who really want to grow a notebooking practice. I've gotten really great notebooking ideas for things that I want to try in my notebook. I've gotten inspiration just for those days where I haven't notebooked, just seeing other people post that they have can kind of kick me into gear a little bit. Yep. But I also love it for the camaraderie between notebookers and this kind of shared sense of sometimes I don't know what to write. And sometimes it was one line and sometimes it was a whole page. And you know what? It all counts and it's all good. So I'm I'm curious because especially I, I guess I wasn't putting the times together. It seems like 2020 was a lifetime ago in some ways. Thank goodness, I guess. What what made you out of, you know, I know you have a love of notebooking, but what made you take that next step of creating that Facebook group? So I live in Virginia and I'm originally from Massachusetts. And for the holidays every year, I travel up to Massachusetts to visit my family. And I um, have a niece and a nephew. I have other family too, but really my niece and my nephew um, are the ones I'm spending a lot of time with. And my niece loved to notebook like I did. And at the time she was 10, 10, 9, 10. Oh, I should know that. Um, and she and I wanted to connect somehow in terms of like keeping connected, even when I went back to Virginia. And so we thought about, oh, let's write in our notebooks every day and send each other pictures. And how could we do this? And what if we had, she said, what if my mom did it? And what if Graham? So we we were trying to figure it out. And I said, um, and, and the notebooking group came from that. It just, we wow. just kind of kept talking about it. And I said, well, what if it was bigger? And what if we invited other people? And how long should we do it? So that's a little bit of a long drawn out story that that's really the impetus for it, that that conversation with her. And we sketched and we drew. And um, from there, that notebooking group was created. And who knew that three months later, the world was going to shut down. And I cannot tell you for me personally, and I know other people have said this to me in the group, that group helped me so much. I um, live here with my dog and to be quarantined alone away from family was really, really hard. But to have that connection with that group of people um, who were also writing and sketching and doodling and doing all the things we do in notebooks yeah. was so powerful that that I think really cemented it as something really valuable and important in a lot of our lives. Yeah. Let's talk about the people in there for a minute, because there are some amazing people yes. in there. Amazing notebookers, amazing humans, amazing educators, and we're near and far. You, you have quite an audience in there. Do you 
what are your statistics of this group? Like, what are you up to in terms of numbers and kind of so, the backstory? I'm trying to think. We started the first year we were 100 or maybe two, and yeah. we're up to 675 now. So um, awesome. It, it makes me so happy. Just recently, before this this year started, um, I posted it in a bunch of other Facebook groups I'm in. This is what we have if you're interested. And I was happily shocked at how many people joined. Yeah. Um, so 675. And it, you know, I want to go back to something you said earlier. It makes me so happy to hear you say the camaraderie and the support and the encouragement because that was the goal. So often when I talk to people about notebooking, other people call it journaling, and yeah. they they ask what notebooking is versus it, or they ask, well, or they say, very often I hear, I can't join, I'm not a writer. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. I can't. And, and, you know, we'll talk about it. I got my mother to do her first notebooking page. And oh. <laughs> she's very proud of it. And she claims she's not a writer, although she's fantastically creative. And that's, but I wanted it to be a space where people could come and say, I, I've only notebooked eight days and it's the 12th or I've, oh, I've missed four days. And, and people are not met with, you can do better, but they're met with, that's great. Keep going. Right. And it, I see it so often and that's what I wanted to build a community where people could show up and say, where do I go now? Or I'm struggling with this or, Oh, I, I'm celebrating this. And no matter what they're met with, you know, cheers and encouragement and support. Yeah. Yeah. Which they are. And I, I think, you know, that's another reason I love the group. The people are certainly one, but the other is that, you know, like you said, when some people hear notebooking, they think a couple of things like, do you mean journaling? Is that the same as morning pages? Like what kind of notebooking do you mean? And well, I'm not a writer, so can I join that group? And they don't realize that notebooking is just a life tool. It can be whatever you want it to be. If you want to write things that eventually get published, then great, that's one kind of writing. But then there's a bazillion other kinds of writing that show up in the notebook from memory keeping to list making to doodling and like you said sketching and all all sorts of of things in there and I think that group can really help someone redefine what writing is and right. if they are a writer so I'd love for I'd love to know what your definition of notebooking is because you you're right we could say notebooking we could say journaling we could say writing right. I like the term notebooking because I feel like it's broad and encompasses so much, but how do you define notebooking? To me, notebooking is showing up to the page. I, that's the simplest way okay. for me to explain it to somebody. And any ans any question that follows that, any permission question, the answer is yes. Can mm -hmm. I? Yes. But am I allowed? <laughs> yes. Is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's just a blanket yes. And <laughs> It is, and I'll use my mom again as, and as, as an example, because she said, she had said to me, I, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to journal. And I said, okay, don't, don't journal. And she is keeping track of um, miles. She walks every day. And I said, well, why don't you put that in your notebook? And she said, oh, wait, I'm allowed. And I said, <laughs> yes. And after a, about, well, I guess it was after about 20 days, she sent me a picture of her page. When I tell you it was more than just the miles because she put the date and she put the mile, but then she added little notes and she put little sketches of a snowman because it snowed that day and a little note that, oh, I walked to Jack's basketball game or whatever it was. And I said, mom, do you look at how good this page is? This isn't just a list. There's so much on this page. And that's what I think people don't give themselves enough credit for. They show up on a page and I don't care if it's a grocery list or a to-do list or a list of how long you're walking, you will show up on that page 
um, however you do. And that's, that's what notebooking is. Right. It's unique. It's personal. Yeah. It's non-judgmental. It's patient. It's whatever. I love how you just didn't, you didn't let anybody finish a sentence. It's just, yes, yes. That's exactly what notebooking could be. And of course, there's people that still need to ask all the questions and they'll say, but can I just ask? And I say, go ahead. And they'll ask and I'll say, yeah, that's okay. Right. It, it's the permission that's really big for people. And I think that sometimes when we're learning to be writers in school, sometimes we get stuck on all of the rules that, I mean, we have to learn the rules of writing when yeah. we're in school. But sometimes we can't get past that anymore once we get beyond it. And I just, it is an expression of yourself. However you do it, whether you use um, a notebook or um, with lines, without lines, pens, markers, pencils, you know, it's perfectly straight and organized. You have a table of contents or you're <laughs> scribbled all around. It's all, that's an ex extension of you. Yeah. So speaking of that, let's talk about the actual notebooks for a moment, because we already said how we are some of, I would say we're fewer and far between people who enjoy notebooking in, in blank pages. Um, and it's funny because it depends on my purpose for mm -hmm. writing. Sometimes I do need lines. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't. I think why I loved the notebook without lines, especially in the beginning, was exactly the reason you said, I'm an educator, I'm a teacher, I teach writing, I review writing, I work within a college that has very specific requirements for the kind of writing that I do. And for me, that blank page was like, guess what? I can do whatever the heck I want to on this because there are no lines, there are no rules. It's just there. And for me, I think that was the appeal to yeah. just break out of the academic writing routine I was in and get beautiful sharpies and sticky notes and things that I could just play with. And that's actually how my, my very first blog um, was about instructional coaching, literacy coaching. And it was called the coaching sketch notebook because I did no writing in that book. I only sketched in images as a way of just breaking free a little bit and having creativity. So I'm curious what calls you to a blank page versus a lined page, a lightly lined page, a dotted grid or something else? Okay. So I started when I was in the fourth grade and they were only notebooks with lines or journals with diaries, whatever they were. Right. So I wrote on lines probably through, um, probably through college. No, maybe through high school. Um, it was probably college when I was out in New Mexico visiting, um, my dad, he had lived there at the time and I went to a bookstore and they had sketchbooks in the journal section and I lost my mind. I thought, <laughs> oh my goodness, there's no lines. And now I'd been doing this for a long time. And so I thought, what would that be like? And so I did, I got markers and I got the sketch book, the, the notebook. And I just started like scrawling on the pages and I was in college, you know, it, college is hard work and you're doing a lot of academic writing and a lot of kind of really intense work. This was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It was like a playground. I found this playground that brought me so much joy and it was to the point too, where it was a big spiral. I still have it too, a big spiral notebook. And I remember um, it was vertical. The spirals were at the top. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I was having a really bad day. And not only did, was I scrawled, did I scrawl? I turned it upside down. That blew my mind even more because I was writing backwards or upside down or whatever yeah. it was. And it just, you know, I am a rule follower in my professional life and I'm just, that's who I am. And I got to break every rule in this notebook and it didn't, it didn't matter. It brought me, 
it, it made me so happy. And I thought, oh, I could take risks in here and I could try things. So I think that's the biggest reason why pages without lines are so appealing. Now I confess, sometimes I find notebooks I love so much and if they have lines, I will try them. Yeah. Um, usually I get a little frustrated, but I'm getting better at ignoring the lines and I can, you know, I'll try and scrawl or I'll try and do some things. So I ignore them. Um, you know, what's funny though, is I am not a fan at all of the dotted or the grid pages, which I, I think not either. you're not either. I, it's no. interesting because that's closer to blank than line, right. but it, it just, I don't like it. I don't know why I can't explain it. <laughs> I can. I think I can. At why? Least. Tell me why. Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, when I look at the dot grid, I, I feel like I'm looking at graph paper or graph like paper. And mm -hmm. it feels even more constraining to me than the lines do, because then I feel like, okay, not only do I have to make up my own line to make sure my writing is even, because I feel like I'm supposed to follow the rule of the dots. But then I feel like everything's got to be this proportion and then my letters have to be perfect and I've got to stay within that top dot and I just overthink the whole entire thing. And I feel just more stressed looking at the dots, even though I used to love that game as a kid where you'd oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. use all the lines and connect the four lines and then write your initial in the box. It was one of the most fun games I used to play with my dad, but I, when I look at them in a notebook, I just think, oh, it's, it's too, it's yeah. too math-like. It's too graph-like. I don't, I don't know, but it just, it gives me a, it doesn't feel inviting to me in the way that a blank page or even a lightly lined page yes. would. Lightly lined is okay with me. I, and now I've always been, uh, for like a spiral notebook, I've always been, um, a wide ruled cause I write pretty big. And so I, if I'm going to do lines, I prefer that they be a little bit broader. If they're heavy, if they're dark color and they're like really close together, I can't as much, even if I love the notebook, I just can't. Yeah. That's so interesting because I, I, I will not write. I can't do it. I don't know why, but I, I despise wide ruled notebooks. I just, I need them college ruled. I don't like dark lines either. I want yeah, them there yeah. as a guide, but I want like you to be able to do whatever I want with them and not have them be so prominent. But it, isn't it interesting? Just those instant preferences that, that people have of, I don't yes. know where that college line came from. Maybe I did write small when I was younger. And so right. it looked like I didn't fill the page, but college rule did. I don't know, but it just find it so fascinating what people prefer. It's funny because there was a time, like I said, when I first started doing, um, using blank notebooks, I was, you, I only wanted spiral notebooks mm -hmm. and my mom had bought me, you know, a, if you know me, you know, a notebook is probably a good gift for me. <laughs> and every time I would discover something new, it seemed to be right after she, or right before she bought me a gift. And I was like, oh, thank you. But I don't, <laughs> how do you, and she got to the point where she's like, I can't buy you notebooks anymore yeah. because, just because you're so, you know, and I said, no, I think that's good. I think because I am so particular it's probably easier if I just get them. And for the longest time, and they don't sell them anymore, but um, at Barnes and Noble, they used to sell the best sketchbooks. They're similar to this. It's like eight and a half by 11 mm -hmm. hardcover sketchbooks that were like $12. And they were my favorite and they don't sell them anymore. So mm -hmm. I, my new favorite is, um, I think it's called Ferris Wheel Press. I oh. think that's the company. And I don't have one right here. I have one over there. Um, they're they're a little bit um, the next size smaller than this. I can't. I don't know what the next size. I can't. I don't know what the name of it is. But they're a little bit thicker, and the pages are really nice and thick. Yeah, the pages. There's some free advertising for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because not too long. Well, I honestly, I don't know how long ago it was now, but. I was running out of one of my favorite notebooks to take notes in at work. So it was lightly lined. It had this gold spiral. I just loved it. 
at the same time, I was running out of my morning page notebook too. And I was, I was beside myself, my two favorite notebooks. I could not find a replacement and I put it, I put it out on social media and I tagged you and you actually found the website that I was able to find the insert to my morning page notebook that fit <laughs> the size. So there's just something about it. Like I know technically, right? If we're honest, it really doesn't matter what right. notebook you write in. Right. It's all good. It's it's all the benefits are still there. You can get as creative or as therapeutic as you want, but there really is something about having a notebook that you love sitting there waiting yeah. for you on the table to open up and write it that just it it just invites you and reminds you to to get to it and to well, to get writing. I I completely agree. I mean, a composition notebook, a spiral notebook, that's 99 those are perfectly fine um one one question that I get a lot in the notebooking group um is particularly from people that are new to it is if they have a special notebook or someone's gotten them something special and they think it's just beautiful and they almost feel like it's too precious yes this is a tip and I have used this with adults and and students alike uh to, you know middle schoolers grab um, a marker and open to the first page and um, just scribble, like just draw a giant scribble okay. on it. Now, if you can't do that yourself, ask someone in your family or in your house. If like you and I were in the same room and you were asking me that, I would ask permission to write on one of the pages and I would do that. And you always see people's eyes like bugging out. Yeah. And then I say, well, go ahead and what do you want to do with it? And I, I, I had a, a sixth grade student years ago who was like frozen from writing in their notebook for a while. And this was a very, you know, hardworking, high achieving student that just couldn't do it. And I asked them permission. Do I have permission to write something? And they said, yes. And I scribbled and Oh my goodness. <laughs> they were not happy with me, but I walked away. And by the time I came back, they had taken that scribble and written on like they had followed the the curve of the scribble and written all through it and then had their writing go around. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Sometimes you just need that. Yeah. You just need something to go from quote unquote perfect to okay, I guess I have to fix or rip a page out make it imperfect. And then you feel like, oh, I guess I could do something now. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good point. So many of us do hesitate when starting that new notebook because it's just too pretty or I might mess it up and it does get easier. You know, once you're a notebooker, it gets easier. But I remember thinking that same thing. And, and there are still even notebooks that I have here just waiting to be next up in the queue Yes. That, you know, I tend to jockey around of, oh, what will I do with that one? Uh, but I love that recommendation. Start with a scribble and then you can always do something with that scribble and then you've gotten it out of your system and now it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, I think that perfection is the biggest enemy of notebooking and of writers. Mm -hmm. You know, there was someone in my office today talking about having to write something for a college class that she was taking. And she said, I'm just stuck. I don't know what to do. And I said, why don't you give yourself permission to write it badly? And she kind of looked and said, what do you mean? And I said, just say, I'm going to write a really bad version of this and then just write it on a piece of paper. And she said, well, I've been on the computer and I delete, delete, delete. And I said, no, no, no. Like either do it on a piece of paper or if you're on the computer, you know, don't delete. And she kind of looked and I could tell she was thinking about it. I think because we want to do it perfectly and yeah. writing does not come out perfectly. No. Ever. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. And you, you need, at least I need, I need multiple goes. If I'm, th if I'm writing something that is for an audience outside of my own personal notebook, it's, it's one draft, it's two draft, it's back up, it's change it up. And a lot of times, you know, I, I need to see it. I need to yeah. see it on that paper. I am that old fashioned person. I don't, I may not draft a whole piece in my notebook, but I'm certainly going to outline or just 
tinker, right? Just to get those ideas out on, on the page. And don't you find sometimes the things that come out when you do that, that you think, oh my gosh, what is coming out of me? Those very often end up being nuggets of like brilliance. Yes. Like those are the parts that are the most creative and the most um, well-loved when other people read them. And you think, but those are the things that we delete on the computer. Those are the things that we're afraid to write down in the notebooks. Right. And so I just, um, if people could let those things out and take a little space from it, they're going to see, oh my goodness, that's actually pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it is quite surprising what comes out on the page <laughs> that you didn't quite expect. Yes. Now you mentioned multiple notebooks and you mentioned that you still have them. Do you keep all of your notebooks? And if so, do you ever go back and browse? I do. How does that work? I do. I have, okay, this is my crowning glory. I am on notebook number 99. I knew it was close to 100 from the Facebook group. Nice. I am very, very close. I was kind of hoping to do 100 by my birthday, which was which was um, just recently, but I will I will be doing 100 soon. Um, and when I say 100, I almost want to say that loosely because at one point I thought I was like at 80 and then I found four more notebooks. <laughs> I have kept them years ago. Kate Messner had like um, an online writing thing in the summer on her website and I participated in it and somehow that motivated me to find all of my notebooks so I went through I pulled them all together I numbered them like I put them in you know year order numbered them so yeah I do they're in there's um one of my bookcases behind that's sitting behind me right now has notebooks from um how do I want to say this? Like important parts of my life, like the big transition in my life, those notebooks I can keep out because those are the ones that I tend to return to the most. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while, I'll pull out some others. I do at the end of every year, go back and pull my notebooks from that whole year and I'll spend like New Year's Day or somewhere around there. I'll spend time rereading through all my notebooks. Um which makes me so happy. So yeah, I, it's, and my favorite is when I go through a notebook and I think, I don't even remember writing this, Yeah, which is life that I would have forgotten because I've written it down. I can revisit it and it, it just, um, you know, it brings me back there. Yeah. I have a, um, I'm looking here. It is a five-year journal that I love for exactly that reason. And for, you know, this is so sad for me to admit, but for a long time, you know, I heard about the five-year journal, thought, oh, what a great idea. I wish I did that when the kids were little. It's too late to do it now. You know, they're teenagers. Right. What am I going to record now? Which is the most ridiculous, you know, thing because any any life, any day is worth capturing. And so I started this and I will go flip through a random day and I would never remember that little teeny tiny moment that is sitting in my five-year journal unless I happen to write it down here. And then I remember that trip to the ice cream store. I remember stepping in that puddle on the walk where one of my kids laughed so hard at my wet feet, you know, something that would have just passed by, but notebooks do help you remember. And so even one line one little thing a yes. day in a notebook, you will be so grateful Yes. later on when you are looking back at it. Well, and there's so many things that you can do. I love the, I love the idea of the one line a day, five-year notebook. And I have tried a couple of times and ironically, I keep failing at that, which is that not the funniest thing ever that I'm just like <laughs> right voraciously in my other notebook, but I can't manage to remember. It's that just one. a matter of getting the habit and I'll get there. Yeah. Um, we also, I think we've talked in the past about note, having multiple notebooks at a time or yes, in one. Yeah. And it, it kind of changed my tune a little bit. Oh, tell me. Okay. I, in the now. past, I've always been everything's in one. Everything's in one, everything's in one. Um, I actually do keep a separate notebook for work. Mm -hmm. which that, that one has lines as well. 
Um, but I am keeping them, you know, there's to-do list and there's notes and I'm, this is a new position for me after all these years of teaching. So it's really interesting how I do think that professional notebook's going to keep changing. And then personally, I started this, this year, I love poetry. I love poetry. And I always find when I'm looking for a poem I love, I can't find one or like, they're just all random. And I like lots of different poets. And so I decide, I had this idea in November, I got this notebook and it's, there are lines, which oh, is so beautiful. Funny. Isn't it pretty? There's 365 pages. Oh, it's this beautiful yellow hardcover with a tree printed on top. It's lovely. Feet of life. And so what I'm doing, okay, and I, I'll, I'll admit I'm 119, so I'm about four days behind, but every day I'm trying to record a poem that I love. Wow. Now, I'm also, if possible, some of those days I'm also writing a poem. So if I record a poem, I might write a poem in response to that or somehow connected to it. Some days I'm just writing a poem, like I'm letting myself do it however I want, but it has been so much fun looking for poetry and having poems and looking through things and just now, I don't know if it's going to work because it's 365 pages and some of the poems are two and a half pages, but just the idea of having them all in one space. Yeah. So normally this would go in my normal notebook, but I feel like I wanted a place that the one thing about my other notebook is that if, when I'm done with it, I'm done with it. And so sometimes it's hard for me to remember where was that poem? Yes. Because I am not someone, I don't consider myself organized in that, oh, this is there and this is, I don't, some people keep a table of contents, which I kind of envy them. Um, I have gotten to the point where on the edges of the notebooks, I'll put the dates and I'll put anything big that's happened. So if I went to a conference or if I did something, I'll write. So I, maybe I can look on there. Um, but I am, I'm trying out this different one and I, I'm hoping this poetry one, I'm, I don't think I've put this in the notebooking group yet. I'm going to need, I'm going to put that in the group soon. Yeah, I love that. I have a notebook like that, but for quotes because I love pulling quotes from the books that I read. And so I have a, a dedicated notebook just for that, for exactly the same reason. I used to have just one notebook and now I have eight. <laughs> you have eight. I have eight. I did a whole episode on it. So if listeners are wondering how the heck I have eight notebooks, I do talk about all eight of them in the episode. And it's not that I write in all eight every day. There's Perfect. a morning page notebook. There's a work notebook. There's a calendar slash agenda. There's yeah. my quote notebook. There's my five-year journal. There's my purse notebook. There's my little courage notebook I started in 2024. It just makes Love me it. happy to see the stack yeah. and have a different purpose for each notebook. But I also know people where, and I'm a little jealous of this, one notebook with everything in it, which I love the idea of, I just haven't been able to wrap my head around the logistics of wanting it later when it's full, but I right. still have something. So for now, the multiple notebooks, it it works it works for me. And and I I love collecting them. So it's a I just indulge that hobby with no care at all. I'm good. I'm writing in them and they make me happy. So <laughs> fantastic. I didn't save them for a really long time though. And when I heard you say number 99, I could kick myself for not hanging on to those notebooks from so long ago. But what is it? Gretchen Rubin has this wonderful saying of the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is now. So the best time to save your notebook would have been way, way back. But the second best time is to just start now. It, listen, and everyone has a different perspective on that as well. I am someone that can't imagine getting rid of my notebooks, even notebooks from painful times in my life or hard times. There are other people that burn their notebooks at the end of every year. And that I is, heard of that. Yeah, I cannot, to me, oh, I could not imagine. But I've heard kind of rituals that people do with, with, 
you know, burning them. And there is something to be said for that. So again, it's, it's what works for you. It's the permission that you give yourself for where do you want those in your home? Do you want to get rid of them? You know, some people want to keep them and give them to their kids when they're older. You know, it's, it's, it, you can do what you want with your notebooks. Yeah. Yeah. So for someone who has been listening and now we've gotten them all excited, like they're ready to notebook. They're ready to go buy the perfect notebook. Well, no, 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 not perfect. A really wonderful notebook. So they don't get overwhelmed by perfection of a notebook. They're going to join your 100 days of notebooking Facebook group. Do you have a recommendation or two for someone who hasn't notebooked before who wants to get started or even someone who's notebooked, but just hasn't done it regularly, but wants to, what is your best advice for them? You know, there's a couple of pieces of advice. I would make sure you get the notebook and a pen or pens that make you happy. Um, One of the things I would encourage you to do is find a time that'll work for you. Um, I like notebooking first thing in the morning. That makes me happy. Like it's a great way to start my day. There's other people that don't want to notebook in the morning. And so maybe it's after dinner, but spend a, spend a week or something and really pay attention to the time in your day and find when, 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 when do I really want to do this? Be really intentional about it. I also would encourage people to find a, a spot. Now you, we can notebook anywhere, right? Sometimes I notebook in school or at work, um, at the end of the day, I'll pull, you know, my personal notebook out and sometimes I'll do it, um, in bed. And sometimes I'll do it in my living room. Sometimes I do it here in my, in my oasis here. Um, but I would recommend trying to find a spot that is free from distractions and is peaceful. Maybe you have a candle there. Maybe there's no television. Maybe it's It's outside, depending on where you live, if it's warm for you, but find that spot where you'll notebook. Being intentional about time and and space really can help um, set that habit. And then it's just sitting down and opening the notebook. And you have to, sometimes, some people, if they really are maybe struggling or not sure where to start, write yourself a permission slip. Mm -hmm. give myself permission to notebook for 10 minutes every day. I give myself permission to be messy and misspell things. I give myself permission to be silly and ridiculous, whatever it is. And sometimes, I mean, literally writing a permission slip can be more powerful than just saying it to yourself. Yeah. Um, Some people like to start notebooks with letters to themselves. What's their intention for doing this? Why are they doing it? Um, some people who are artistic and love to doodle and love to sketch enter the world that way and do some doodles. Some people who are very linear thinking make lists and that's how they come in. So I would recommend come into the notebook with what you are the most comfortable with because that will keep you there while you're developing the habit. And remember, you can turn your notebook upside down and scribble all over it and you're still doing it right. Right. There's, there's no, the only rule is that you show up to the page. Yeah. And, and I don't even necessarily mean every day. I mean, we picked a hundred days because we wanted to do something as purposeful and for, for a long enough time, but that doesn't mean 101, you stop. But that also doesn't mean you're showing up every day. Honestly, there have been a couple of days where I have not picked up my notebook, but that's okay because I come back. So just keep coming back. Yeah. That just would be my- coming back. I love that. There have been days where for me, I have the habit, right? I am a morning writer as well. I get up incredibly early in the morning because it's quiet. Got my coffee. I've got my book. I've got my notebook. Um, But even no matter if someone has a really strong habit or notebooking practice, right? Life, life happens. It can get in the way. And I took a lesson from yoga with a tip that really helps me. So, and I probably some people listening, because I know some of you, um, yoga with Adrian is one of my favorite channels and she does this 30 day challenge. That is just amazing. And she'll often say, as we get started, like sit down on your mat, guess what? 
that was the hardest part. You're here. You're on your mat. Let's see what you can do. And there have been days where I thought, oh, do I want to write? Am I too tired to write? What will I write about? But if I literally just get the notebook and I open it, if I just open it, usually something happens. Maybe I browse old pages. Maybe I do write on a fresh page and it's something little. And sometimes that something little will just go to something big. So I love how your advice is to just show up, show up, open the notebook, and you might be surprised at what you accomplish, especially if you get into the habit of doing that over time. It, it's it's so true. I, I agree with you. I think the hardest part is opening the notebook sometimes. And, you know, give yourself grace on the days you don't and give yourself grace when you open the notebook and you feel like you don't have anything valuable to say. Very, very often people are like, what do I, I don't have anything important to say. Yes, you do. Everybody has their story. That's my word for this year is story. Everybody has their story and you have a story. Now, how that story comes out is up to you. And what that story is, is up to you. And I find on days where I am frustrated and angry and exhausted and overwhelmed, when I go into my notebook, I can let that out. And I can, and usually what happens to me when I start writing, I know I'm angry at that person that cut me off in the grocery store. But by the time I'm done, I'm not angry at that person. I'm angry at something else. Yes. And it helps me figure it out. And I think most of us are usually hardest on ourselves. Give yourself a break. And the notebook can be a place where you can give yourself a break, where you can take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, it's patient, right? It's always there and it is never judgmental, exactly which right. is something that's really hard to find both things in the real world in your notebook can provide it. And the very moment that you need it, which is just this gift that we yeah. can give ourselves if, if we get over and out of our own way of assuming there's one right way to do yes. it. And that's yes. where your notebooking group can be the support yes. that people need, the support, the inspiration, the FOMO, right? A little bit of FOMO because when yes. you see people posting, it's like, oh, I could do that. I could rather that. Oh, she wrote in a pink pen. I should write in a pink pen tomorrow. Or, oh, look at the stickers or, yes. you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's so much. And there's a library of pages. Like there are so many photographs of pages. There is also, this is a concern sometimes, You there's no requirement. You don't have to share your notebook page. There's very often I do, I won't share my pages if it's something personal, but um, sharing pages can help if there's something creative or there's kind of a way you did it. So there's a whole media file or photo album um, of, notebook pages from the years that we've done this. And if you don't know where to start, you can go through and just what you said, Stephanie, I do the same thing. I'll find someone's page and think, I want to, I'm going to do a page like that. And yeah. it turns out different, but still I've tried something new and it, it gets that creativity flowing. Yeah. Yeah. And I am glad that you mentioned that it's, it's not a requirement in the group to post your notebooking. It's just something that people like to do, want to do. I actually had a lot of fun in the very first year of the group because I found that water log app that could like pixelize my page so that I didn't have to share exactly what I wrote, but people could still see what my page kind of looked like and that I actually did write. And then they send all the love and, you know, yay, look, look what you put on the page. Yes. And I, that's what I appreciate that the days that you want to share, you can share and there is a, an army of people waiting to congratulate you. But then if you just want to write in something, whether it's a question or I wrote today, but I'm just not sharing it here. There's an army of people for that too. As you mentioned, it is such a supportive group. Yes, it really is. And we would love to have anyone who's listening. We would love to have you join us. And if you're already there, thank you so much because the group is was started by me, but it's not me. The group is, is everybody and it's how they show up for each other. And it's just, it's so um, heartwarming and 
um, it's just such a special place. Yeah. So easiest way for them to find it, just to go to Facebook and search for 100 yeah. days? 100 days of notebooking. Yes. And that's the easiest. I, I keep looking for other kind of platforms because not everybody's on Facebook and not everybody it does social media and I haven't found it yet. So <laughs> if and when I do, I will be sure to let you know so you can pass it along. But um, it just is the simplest kind of place where people can share things and um, support each other. So yeah, just go to Facebook and search 100 Days of Notebooking. I have a little bit, um, oh, I have some resources on my website. It's michellehazeltine.com and you can go there and I, there's a link to the Facebook group on my on my website as well. And there's some different ideas about how to notebook and, and pictures of all of my notebooks. So you can, if you're interested in that, you can go over there and check it out. And your space. That recent video, I watched that a couple of times, a little, little envious of this, the, you call, you just called it your oasis earlier. Oasis. Exactly yeah. it. So that's another thing that people need to take a look at. And then think about, cause you made me think what, 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 where, and how could I create a little oasis, you know, right. for, for me. So that was really that was inspiring. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. It was, it was interesting too, because I did it at a time where it wasn't perfect. I didn't have my twinkle lights on. I had a couple of things out of place and that was purposeful and it was hard for me, but I thought, you know what, you want to show up authentically and it's not always perfect. And, um, I'm lucky enough to have, um, like an extra living room in the upstairs of my home. And so that's what I turned it into. And it just brings me so much joy being in this space. And I feel the creativity. That's why it doesn't have to be a whole room. It can be a chair and a table, you know, it can be a bag of stuff that you bring to a space. That's you me. Can, yeah. yeah. I have a little can, bucket. Yeah. Little, you can see a little smiley face buckets and, and those little notebooks. Little and that's with just portable happiness. <laughs> and it works, you know, it's just looking around and finding what's going to work for you, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite writers, um, Glennon Doyle, years and years and years ago, wrote about when she first started writing, she wrote in her closet, yes. right? And I thought that's part of the idea that made me think of this. Like, you can turn anything you want into anything, so... Look around for the for your writing space. That's right. You never know what will happen inside <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I will put links to both your website and to the 100 Days of Notebooking Facebook group into the show notes so that hopefully everyone listening, if you're on social media, hop over there, join the group. But even if you're not, I know that I've convinced some listeners to join Facebook just for the group. And that way they can go for the group and not, not involve themselves in anything else so that they can still take advantage of all the things that we mentioned today. So I will make it clickable and very easy for people to join. And I highly recommend that everyone joins us there. It definitely is the inspiration that you might be looking for, but it's the support that you didn't know you needed in notebooking too. So thank you, Michelle, for creating it. And for sustaining it all these years and just building it into what it is today. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you're a part of it and you continue to, to be a part of it. Thank you. I'm happy to. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Get Literate podcast. And I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate Podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. Plus, if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing life, like bonus podcast episodes, bibliotherapy book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking challenges, live events, giveaways, and much, much more. It's only $5 a month, and you get instant access to all of the previous content, too. You can learn more at getliterate.co. And one more thing. 
If you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks for listening.